What up, socialites? Welcome back to the Social Studies Podcast with me, Joe Dombrowski, and the newly famous. Hey, it's me, Gaspar and Dazzo, not newly famous, just person. It's really funny, though, because you guys, right before we started this podcast, he's like, okay, Joe, can we just, like, get started? Like, I got to go to a Netflix thing. Like, I got to be there. Like, can we just, like, get going? I'm just like, okay, okay. I, 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 I was trying I'll to show I was trying to show Joe what he does to me every time we record. <laughs> <laughs> Shut hey. the hell up. That's How you guys doing today? Um, yeah, so uh, nice to see you guys again. The show just dropped. The second batch of episodes, if those of you don't know, on The Trust on Netflix, uh, they just dropped episodes five, six, and seven on Wednesday the 17th. It is now Monday the something. It's the 22nd-ish, and we are recording. It's the 22nd. Cool. So how's it going, Joe? Yum. Oh, and you could catch Joe on the road at? It's going well. Uh, Mr. D times three.com or the Joe Dombrowski.com coming up. I'm going to be in Lexington, Kentucky this weekend. And then I'm going to be in Portland, Vancouver, Seattle, Appleton, Milwaukee. There's literally so many dates. Just go check the website. The Joe Dombrowski.com. Thank you. And I will be in New York city. I will be in Rochester. I will be in Arizona, San Diego, Connecticut, uh, uh, Jersey, uh, Poughkeepsie, a bunch of other places too. Just check my website, gasparandazzo.com. That's gasparandazzo.com. What's going on, Joe? I'm in a hotel room right now recording. I brought all my podcast stuff like an adult. Literally so proud of you, Gasper. I even brought my laptop, which is crazy. It is nice to speak to you at normal human hours. Not yes. that we did it, but yeah. And we're also on uh, the same time zone right now. How are you feeling? I'm in LA, by the way, in case you didn't know. What? Let me ask you this right quick. Did you, oh, by the way, you guys too, we're going to get more into the trust at the end of this episode. We're taking questions from our Patreon fans. Shout out to our Patreon fans. Thanks for supporting the podcast and keeping us on the air. You can become a Patreon fan too at patreon.com slash the social studies podcast. Gasper will give us even more behind the scenes on Patreon. So if you want to see that, go there. Um, Guess I saw today on your on your Instagram story because you're in LA doing a bunch of stuff for Netflix that the people at Mel's Diner in LA, which is a famous diner, like took a picture with you. Now, did they take a picture with you or did you take a picture with them? So I'm sitting there with cast member unknown and we were eating lunch. I can't say who it was. So um, we're sitting there eating lunch and um while we were eating lunch, while we were eating lunch, um, we while we were eating lunch, these two guys came over to us and they were like, "Oh my god!" They were like, "We are uh, we've been." Uh, <laughs> we, they were like, uh, "Oh my god!" Like we were literally just watching the show last night, and like now you're here, so we're like, "Oh hey!" So we're talking to him, talking to him, and he's like. We're uh, we are Mel's diner. We own it. Their grandfather was Mel. Oh, and cool. He passed it down to his son. The son passed it down to his son. So it's two sons. They're probably about our age, maybe a little younger. They yeah. own six Mel's diners around uh, between here, uh, San Francisco. They're opening one in Nashville. And he's like huge fans of the show. And he's like, can we take a picture? I was like, we can, but I can't take a picture. We can't take a picture. All of us together. The other person I was with, the individual I was with. Because we can't, we're not allowed. Like Netflix told us, while you guys are in LA, like keep a low profile, don't be together. And if you are together, don't be like taking pictures, you know, running around together, which we are running around together, but we're not taking pictures together. So, no, it did. But it is funny because, like, I'll take a picture in front of something and then, like, yeah. four minutes later, person X will take a picture in front of that same thing and we'll both yeah. post it. But we're not together. So if you put the pieces together, you can figure it out. But um, so it was kind of cool. And they were just like, they gave us hats. They gave us, uh, they were like, do you guys drink coffee? I was like, my wife does. They gave us little pods for uh, K-Cups because they said their coffee is famous. And uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. That was, now that is, now that was the first time being spotted since you've been in LA. Um, For the show, yes. For the show. Oh. 
Oh, okay, big dog. <laughs> All right. No, no. <laughs> oh, okay. He over here. No. He the, over here. In the airport, somebody was like, oh, you're the guy who does those teacher videos. And I was like, yeah, that's me. Um, but they didn't even know I did the show. So th this was like the first time, like specifically for the show. And, uh, and then we got stopped two other times by other people. <laughs> And, and it was funny. This woman came up to us and she goes, which one of you can I trust more? And I didn't understand the question. So I was like, why, do you need help with something? And she's like, <laughs> you're on the show. And I was like, oh my God, I am. And of course I'm wearing my uniform. I got on this basketball shorts and this shirt. And she's like, you dress exactly how I thought you would have dressed. <laughs> and I'm Hilarious. like, yeah. Also, um, so Oh shit! I can't tell this story. Never mind. So the first time that I ever got spotted in the wild was the week that the spelling test video went viral, and it actually ended up being the same day that I was contacted later in the day by Ellen to go on Ellen. And you're never gonna believe where I was. You're, you're literally, you're literally never going to believe where I was. A I'll straight pornography, a straight pornography section in a video store. No, but literally, it might have. It is that extreme. Um, the first time I was spotted, I don't know. Disney World. Oh, that <laughs> makes sense. W have you listened to our own podcast? You like? You never went to Disney World? I thought you just hated it, but I figured you've been there. Oh, many, many times. Yeah, so it's not crazy. As a kid, but um, I was there in a family reunion, and you had I a family reunion at Disney. Kinda, yeah. It was like it wasn't a reunion. It was just the vast majority of my dad's side of the family decided to go at the same time. Okay, I guess, but it wasn't That's... like, "Are you coming to the family reunion?" It wasn't really like that. You didn't have like hats that said Dombrowski. No, we didn't. So anyway, would you care to read it to the class? What? <laughs> no, good. So then I. So then he. Um, we were all eating breakfast together and I was leaving breakfast and like the, the host who was seating people as I walked out, he goes, bye, thank you. And you're so funny. And I was like, <laughs> I am. And he's like, yeah, you're so funny. Your video is hilarious. And I was like, which one? And he goes, the spelling test one, the one that's extremely viral right now. And I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. And I turned and I like, gestured towards him at my dad and my dad was just looking at me goes oh my god <laughs> and then, then he went and then he went and told like all of the other joe just got spotted <laughs> it was like but it's cool it, the wheels were turning at that point we were like oh oh shit it's happening yeah yeah like and i will I say go to new beaches anymore <laughs> i will say this it's, it was really cool. To, this was like the first time I was like spotted that had nothing to do with like teacher-esque stand-up stuff. Love it. So Love like it. that was cool. Like three different people who were Love not it. teachers because it's usually always teachers. Of so course, like of course. three people who were not teachers were like, I know you. And like, and then all three of them at the end of the conversation said, oh my God, you're exactly like you are on the show. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I was like, all right, it's just film me walking around. Um, also, so Joe, tonight, I, we could talk about this cause it's cool. It's not anything giving away tonight. I'm going, I'm doing squid games. Tell me more. So where I am staying, so I'm in tonight the, you're going to get shot. <laughs> there is a giant building. It's like picture of a massive warehouse, right? Okay. It's a giant warehouse building. And in that warehouse building, they recreated squid games and you comp compete in all the games of Squid Games. So, um, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know exactly what ones, but it's uh, it's like two hours you're in there and you're in like groups of eight or 10 and you just Squid Game. And I don't know, they said that uh, we get a track suit when we go. What? Yeah, and uh, it's expensive. I mean, like Netflix is picking it up because we're having like a premiere party in there. So we're right. doing it and then we're going out to eat or we're eating there or something like that. I think okay. there's like and a it, Korean restaurant in there. And it's the entire cast of the trust? P yes, plus Netflix reality people. So like so, so, so many? I don't know. I have no idea. I wonder who the most reality famous person to be there is going to be. 
Ni. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, the clip. That's the clip. Is that the, the clip. clip? That's the clip. No, um, <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. But either way, I don't listen. As you know, I don't matter to me if you're famous or not. Joe, yesterday I sat. Oh man, I guess we could. T- uh, yeah, we could talk about this. Yeah. Yesterday I went. I had to do like interview stuff and like have some meetings with some Netflix people. <laughs> what? You just go, me. And I go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So yesterday I had this like meeting, right? And I don't, you know, I don't know how to act. So like they put me in this first off. You do they, know how to act, but you don't know how to act like anyone other than yourself. <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't know how to, that's true. But I like, so like they first off, all right, they drove me there, right? What? Can I just do like a little ADHD tangent really quick? Yeah, of course. Can you... Can can I like test your acting for a second? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Give me British. Hello. If you like, if you like to eat a little pasta, I can get it for you. Okay. That's give good. Me, okay. Give me British and sad. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get my face sad. Hello. Would you like a little coffee? <laughs> Wait. Why is it a sad server? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hello. Okay. Our town is torn from the war. <laughs> Aus- Australian and excited. Uh, I, I can't think of one. They're the crocodile hunter. Oh, yeah. No, I don't. I don't got it. Oh, yeah, I got a. You do one. Let me hear you do British sad. What the hell does that even mean? <laughs> British sad. British sad. British there people don't get sad. They're cold. No, they do get sad when they wake up in the morning and their Earl Grey is actually brown. <laughs> Overproofed, underproofed. Okay. <laughs> sponge. Sponge. That's what they say on Great British Break Off. They say the sponge is overproofed. Do um Australian excited. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, anyway, keep going. What were you saying? <laughs> oh my god. Um, 10 out of 10, you know, would nail it. Okay. Anyway, so Joe and I just talking in the chat. Um No, we're not. <laughs> so, um yeah, so I go to the first off. All right, so let me just tell you how it happened. So, I get they they sent a car to pick me up, right? So right away, you know, I I was for those of you at home, I was sending pictures <laughs> for those of you at home, <laughs> of, oh no i just i got a phone call sorry i had to check my phone <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so anyway so we um i go to this meeting and while i'm on the meeting um i go they call a car for me so i was like oh you don't have to call a car i'll get there on my own oh and by the way he texts me this car you guys and he goes oh my god my butler is here i said please for the love of god do not call him your butler to his face i did not call him a butler he he called he called himself he goes i'm your butler for the day but he was laughing he was cool as hell so he goes to get out of the car i go First off, I sent all my outfits to Joe and Melissa before I went. And I was like, should I wear this? Should I wear that? I was like, they were coaching me on what to wear. I still haven't worn the the nice shoes, but that's all right. So I just wore my sneakers the whole week. So I get outside and the guy gets running out of the car. I go, whoa, don't get out of the car. Like, are you crazy? Like, I could get in myself. I got in the front seat. I didn't think to get in the back. (laughs) I just sat next to him. He was like, Oh, nobody ever sits next to me. So I was like, oh, buckle up. Like, here I am. So <laughs> we hung out. I was like, I, and then uh, I said to him, I said, we got there a little early. I was like, oh, if you want, I could get us some food from our restaurant because I had like a, like I was able to spend like per diem at the restaurant. So I was like, I'll grab us some food. And he's like, oh shit, like you don't have to do that. And I was like, what else am I doing? So like, but we had to go. So he was like, it's not going to be time-wise. So we drive there. He did tell me that Ryan Reynolds, the nicest passenger he ever had. Oh, just cool. so he said he drives. I always ask who's the nicest and yep. who's the meanest. Yeah. So he always, they drive celebrities. He said, Ryan Reynolds, super down to earth, 
always sits in the front. Oh. Always hangs out, laughs, jokes. His uh, family gets in the car. He said, really nice guy. And then he was telling me some stories about some rappers that he had that uh, the rappers have a bodyguard car that follows their car. And another car came and pulled up next to them and was trying to shoot them. The bodyguards rammed them off. He was telling me all these cool stories. Yeah. We were, we were at, we had to drive like four miles, but LA. So it was 45 minutes. And, yeah. uh, <clears throat> but anyway, so then we get to the studios and I'm like, so they just like put me in this little like room. Then this guy comes in and he's like, Oh, do you want me to do your makeup? Uh, and cause I had to film stuff. So I was like, I don't know, like, do I need makeup? Like, are you telling you me say? something? So he was laughing. He's like, well, we can fix up here. And oh, I was really? like, oh, what's I was the, like, what's this acting you're doing? Do do the makeup guy one more time. He said, hey, bro, we can fix up here. So I was like, oh, really? Because I don't know if we're trying to say that he's of a different feather. <laughs> I wasn't saying that at all. Um, so I was saying that that was the voice he had. And that was it. So, okay. so anyway, so he was like, we can do up here in uh, where like your hair just ends. I was like, are you going to fucking paint hair on me? Um, <laughs> I was like, are you going to paint hair? And he's like, no, he's like, it's just, we put like makeup up there to make it blend. I don't know how that works anyway. So then after a while I went in, I did my interview stuff and it was pretty cool. Cause like when I was on the show, I did a lot, a lot, a lot of interviews, obviously, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> was it just like being on the show again? It was, but it was all new people. Like I didn't know anybody in there, and oh, they new like staff. new staff, and they new recreated crew, the whole set of oh, no shit where we were from. And uh, oh, I don't know so, if I like that. So I walked in, and like it's just all strangers. But like I'm just myself. Like I was like, oh, I was like. You know, right before I went in, like there was a taco. I was like, oh, can I grab one real quick? They were like, you're about to go on. I was like, I can literally eat it in like 10 seconds. And they were like, if you want, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, so I was like, yeah, cool. I ran over, I ate real quick because I knew I was going to be in there for like, at least like an hour. Uh -huh. Then I watched the final episode. That's what they oh, made they us filmed, do. They filmed So they filmed me watching it. watching it. And then they're like, now By talk. Yourself? They're like, now talk to the TV as if like you were watching it with someone. I'm like, I wouldn't talk if I was watching it with someone. Good for you. And they were like, they, yeah. And then they were like, no, well, you like, fucking would talk. I did. <laughs> well, then they were like, well, like when you want us to pause it, if you want to clear something up, if you want to have a reaction. So I was like, yeah, no problem. So I watched it. Then like I had a meeting with some like important people, whatever. And uh, they left me in this room for a while. So I was just like, whatever. So I was just sitting there. I was eating all the snacks. There's so much food in the room. I was just like, eating then i couldn't find a garbage pail so i was just stuffing everything in my pocket because i didn't want them to come in i had an orange i had a bag of chips i had all this stuff i had a uh, orange a bag of chips granola bar gushers uh i drank like four bottles of water. i couldn't find a garbage pail so i just shoved it in my pockets so they, they didn't think i was disgusting when they came in then they came in all the stuff was falling out of my pockets when i stood up because <laughs> it was in the windbreaker and then, but they the like- The windbreaker, the bomber jacket. Yeah, the bomber jacket. But then they were laughing. And then like, I just hung out and talked and they were like, you are like literally, they were like, there is no change from meeting you to show you, to interview you, like in a meeting, not meeting like handshake. They were like, there is no difference. You are just like, unapologetically you, I'm like, I don't, am I supposed to be different? I was like, I don't really know what, what do you guys want me to do? <laughs> and they were right. like, no, it, it's great. They're like, just cool. Like have fun. Then I stole so a meeting about, I uh, talk later. And then I stole <clears throat> a bunch of cookies, like every cookie I could find for my driver. Oh, you know? nice. I hooked him up. So that was, you know, so that was it. And then my driver's like, where do you want to? <laughs> Where do you want to go? Lucy was at the window. Lucy's at the window and she just turns and goes, oh my fucking God. <laughs> you go, what? What? Didn't she? Wasn't that oh, video? Oh, yeah. she, they, we had this video of oh, Lucy. Holy just, fucking shit. No, <laughs> was she goes, it? oh, oh my fucking God. <laughs> out of nowhere, she just said it. And we were like, what did you just say? She goes, oh my fucking God. <laughs> but we don't even say that. I don't curse at home. I only curse on the podcast and in stage and in TV, but I don't mm. curse in front of my kids. My wife's the cursor. 
Mm. So, <laughs> oh my fucking! Oh my God. fucking God, Daddy! Are you crazy? <laughs> so, anyway, so that was it. so. And, and then the driver's like, "Where do you want to go now?" I was like, "I don't know." My hotel. He's like, "I could literally drive you anywhere. You, I have you till ten o'clock." So he's like, "I could take your place and just be your driver." I was like, "Can you drive me back to New York? I'm kind of done." <laughs> like, yeah, no, for real. Like, I'm ready to go home. So, um, in in the meantime, while you're living your life in los angeles california i'm going nuts why because you you're noticed? not on tour and you're just home yes oh I my god tell. yes literally going nuts i've watched every single episode of dateline ever <laughs> ever dropped are they good i am i'm fully well i wanted to ask you this and i wanted to ask the fan base this too any any good i think the question's any great i've scared I've scared my sorry. Well, I've scared myself shitless every single day. Um, I'm. Have you ever heard of frogging? Is that where you put a frog up your butt? I don't know why you went there, but no, it's not. I think that's hamster wheeling. Hamster wheeling. Richard Gears. Frogging is when it's different than squatting. It's when someone just lives in your house, like in your walls or in your crawl space. And when oh, you're sleeping, they like come okay. out and like yeah. eat. It's like very scary. I'm convinced that we have a frogger and he's friends with my dog. Anyway, is it too much Dateline? Probably. Is it real? Also very plausible. Did, um, it freaks me the fuck out. Did anyway, you watch the stories of it? I don't. No, I, I feel like this is gonna trailer, and I can't. You know, don't do it right now. I'm home by myself, but don't what? do it right now. Don't oh, in case right he's now. listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, yep. No, but I, did you see the news? No, don't do it. Don't do this to me, Gasper. Don't. I. I won't be able to leave my chair. But they were drinking the milk out of the fridge. <laughs> Stop. I have a Frogger story for you when no, you're no, done. No, no, one. No, for another day. No, no, it, it's about my house. It's okay. Gasper, I swear to fucking God, Gasper, I, I literally am, I can't. All right, so no frogging. Save You're the one who brought it up. I know, so here's what I'm just, I'm doing all this to tell you. I'm talking about this online. I walk around with a meat mallet and a box cutter at all times. And, and 48 the fans, guns. The fans are going nuts. Like people are like, I'm loving you off to where watching you fall down these true crime rabbit holes. And a couple of people are like, you and Gasper need to watch this. You need to talk about this. You need to do this. So I was wondering if maybe March or February or April, who gives a fuck? We should do a true crime month of the podcast where the whole month it's you and I coming to the table with a different case. Okay. I like that. I think that'd be cool. I want to know what the fans think about it. Though. It's like a comedy so true crime know. podcast. Right. You guys can write us. <laughs> did wait. <laughs> That's a great pivot. Um, did you guys, did you guys, if you like that idea, you can write us at the social studies podcast.com also over there, blow us up with your crazy ass stories. You guys have been doing a good job, but we need more. Send your crazy stories about anything at the social studies podcast at gmail.com. Do you want to, let me just tell you a quick Frogger story. So we oh. have, we, I'm at gymnastics with Lucy. Melissa's at baseball with Gasper. All of a sudden our alarm goes off and it's saying the motion detector in the bedroom was going off. There's no way you could get to our bedroom. Like you just can't get to our bedroom without opening a door or a window. You know what I mean? which meant like they were already in the house. Something was already in the house. So I'm like, something must have fell, something must have fell. So then we have cameras in our house as well. Like we have like, you know, by like, like a nanny cam for the, when the kids are playing in the living room or whatever in the playroom. So I go, Alyss, just turn on the nanny cam and just look. If someone's fucking walking around, they're probably coming out of the attic to go into the refrigerator, right? That's what I'm assuming. She turned, I'm getting fucking goosebumps right yeah, now. Burp. She turns the nanny cam on and it's turned around, aimed at the wall, the nanny cam. I just got goosebumps my whole body, and I know the ending of the story. I need so it. She, she, it. So I'm like, oh, my God. They turned the fucking oh. nanny cam. They're facing the wall. I said, I can't. So I go, Melissa's like, I'm calling the cops. I go, don't call the cops. Let me go home. 
And look, I don't want to waste police officers' resources. So I go home. I open the door quick. It's like I didn't give them any warning. I parked. I'm like, Hoo! I open the door quick, hoping to catch them. But then I get like, shit this myself. I scared as hell because I'm like, <laughs> fuck. So oh, my mom was with us. I picked up my mom so she could sit in the car with Lucy while I checked the house because she was coming over anyway. So I'm literally like walking through the house and I'm like, hey, going to shoot you. Got a gun. It already went off like the alarm. So I'm ready to kill you. Then I went up in the attic. I searched the whole attic. I mean, I searched everywhere. I couldn't find them. So I'm just chugging it up as a faulty alarm. But it was freaking scary as hell. Did you go to the nanny cam? What? Did you go to the nanny cam? Yeah, but it was turned backwards. But like, it must have been like one of the kids must. You know what I mean? Like, who knows? Like, it's not like we, we barely ever use it. Joe, no one's living in your house because you've been home. When did they come in? You know, they got to come down to eat. They're like trolls. I can't give you too much information because I'm afraid if they're listening, they're going to hear me talk about it. And if they know that I know, then it's over. So I can't. And then they'll leave. No. I'm also pretty sure I know how they got in the house and I don't want to talk about it because then the whole fan base is going to know how to fucking get into my house. <laughs> yeah, keep it to yourself. <laughs> anyway, you guys. Keep in your um, front. You know what would be good? If you spoke another language and then you'd be able to like speak to me in another mm -hmm. language. <gasps> Well, no, because someone listening is going to know the language. Yeah, but what if it's like a special language? You know, we got to do like back to the old days of like, uh, hey, glad. get a gasp, but a gur. You get know, a gasp, gibberish. A yeah, unda, gleepen, glaupen, gloopen. You know what's so crazy though? I wish we did speak our own language. And if we did, we could actually learn that new language on Babel, by the oh. way. And the best way to learn a new language is immersion. You can live in a place where that language is spoken and use it on a daily basis. But if picking up and moving to a foreign country isn't in the cards this year, then the next best thing is Babel. It's the science-backed language app that actually works. There are quick 10-minute lessons that will keep you engaged the entire time and will get you speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Gabber and I experimented with it, and you guys know that now we're uh, speaking a little Dutch. Uh, uh, let me just speak a little Dutch. Uh. Let me just speak a little. That that was amazing, guess. Anyway, Babbel's lessons are rooted in real life simulations and situations, so you're not wasting time learning vocabulary that you're never going to use. A study even found that using Babbel for just 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester of a college language course. Join over 10 million subscribers who are already learning with Babbel and get started with a new language today. Here's a special limited time deal for you just for our social studies listeners. Right now, you can get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash social studies. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash, I'm so sorry, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash social. That's babbel.com slash social. Get 55% off at B A B B E L dot com slash social. Rules and restrictions do apply. 50, that's a lot. It is a lot, but uh, that we, we're getting better and better deals for the fans, which I'm loving because they deserve it. They deserve it. Anyway, um, guess before we get into talking about the show, should we do one email? We have yeah, let's email let's make this an emails only episode anyway. Yeah, this census is an emails only episode. Uh, we're on the right track. Here we go. This one's called Ice in the Toilet. Hi, I'm a high school algebra teacher. My classes are ESOL focused for language support. Most of my students are newcomers and they're not your typical ninth graders as they are older and many of them are here without their family. Oh, that's sad. That is sad. We have snow in the forecast this weekend, and I was sharing with my students what little kids in America do to hope for a new snow day. PJs inside out, ice cubes in the toilet. I use very basic language, so they're getting it and they're laughing. But then one kid raised his hand and asked, um, Miss, do you mean like... Ice Cube the Rapper? <laughs> I clarified what ice cubes are, but now I can't get it out of my head to put a tiny little printed out picture of Ice Cube in my toilet in 
hopes of a snow day. Thanks for the podcast. I absolutely love listening. You guys, that's awesome. Send your emails of crazy stories to the social studies podcast at gmail.com. And it does not have to be about teaching. Joe, anyway. do you know Snoop Dogg has a cereal? Um, what's it called? Snoopaloops? No, it's uh it's called something like hemp. Uh, Snoop Dogg cereal. So let me guess, you would not feed it to your kids? Hell no. I love that. I love Come, that. Who knows what he's putting in it? It's called, oh, it's called Snoop cereal. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and the logo's a dog. Oh. Uh, there you go. Um, as promised, you guys, we're going to talk about... We took a poll. We got a bunch of questions from you <laughs> on Patreon, patreon.com slash social studies. So if you're a social studies member, you might hear in there. Um, we're going to get through as many as we can. And the rest of this episode will be on Patreon. So if you're loving hearing the back information about the trust, go over there and listen, become a member, and it helps keep us on the air. And we love and appreciate you for that. Are you ready, Gasper Randazzo? Yes, but I just want to tell you, the flavors of the Snoop Dogg cereal, you got cinnamon toasties, fruity hoops, marshmallows, and frosted drizzles. Literally, those are the flavors? Yeah. And also, do you know what Eminem's favorite cereal is? Mm -hmm. uh, cocaine. No, Eminem does drugs. His, uh, it's a uh, raisin bran. Would you know? That's that's some shit. A couple million dollars could make raisin bran my favorite cereal too. Oh, I didn't know Snoop Dogg had a, uh, a, a, what do you call it? Also, he has a a drink line. Interesting. It's called um, Peaches and Honeys. I don't know if I like that. The Shiznit Blue Raz, G Dup Blood Orange. Well. There you go. And um, last thing, Eminem's favorite soda is Mountain Dew. Um, love it. Glennis Kijak asks. Oh, by the way, you guys, these are on these questions are pretty much all based on the next, the second batch of episodes that were released, which I believe is five, six, and seven. So yes. keep that in mind. I can't imagine. Yeah. So spoiler, there might be spoilers if you didn't watch five, six, and seven yet. I can't imagine being able to see whales from my balcony. What a cool experience. How long often did you actually see whales? Uh, you'd see whales, I would say, four or five times a day. We were in a what was day? called a whale pod. And it was uh, it was like a hangout for whales. So yeah. like they would always be there just blowing water up in the air constantly. That... That it it was cool, but like anything else, like after a while, I'm like, oh, cool whales, and then you're like, all right, we get it, you're a fucking whale. Really? I don't know if I ever would have got. Well, like it. think about, you know, a, a whale is just a, an ocean donkey. Mm hmm. <laughs> and you see those all the time. <laughs> an ocean donkey, Casper. <clears throat> all right, next, um, Sam Wickham. Uh, any thoughts? that this experience gave you regarding human nature. Ooh. My husband and I have been reflecting a lot on human nature after watching the show. Uh, yes, but uh, it's a good question. It's a deep question. Um, it definitely makes, and as Joe, as a viewer, you can also answer this. Like it definitely makes you look at things like, how different everybody was and how everyone views like how who who views what as who's deserving who views yeah. what as what's important who views trust who views like a, making a community with a bunch of strangers is a big deal to some people whereas in other people don't give a shit about making yeah. a, you know what i mean like money trumps everything to some people relationships trump things to certain people you know, so I think it makes you realize how different people can really be. And you don't know what it, you look at someone from the outside. And it's such a there's so much inside them that's so loaded that you just have no idea. As a viewer of the show, too, uh, specifically, uh, I've thought this for a while now, and I think I've kind of shared this thought with you before. But um, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money to me it's a lot of money to you but it's not a lot of money to a larger chunk of people in this country than we would probably be able to think right 
It reality TV sometimes makes me feel like, are we in a simulation and this is just some weird entertainment for super rich people to watch quote unquote poor people do wild shit to see what they'll actually do for money? Because some people wipe their ass with 250K and they're like, yeah. ha ha, look at these peasants vote each other off and ruin their lives by being drunk in a pool and showing their titties to the world. You know what that's, I mean? That's all rich people. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's my rich people acting. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> you feel I, me though? Like you get what I'm saying. I, no, I get the concept. I, listen, I think that here's the the bigger thing the 250,000 and i think Lindsay says it best 250,000 is a lot of money splitting $250,000 between 11 people is not as much money right and then it's still a lot 25 you know $22,000 is still life changing to a degree but after taxes that's 15,000 that helps your life it doesn't you know you're not retiring with $15,000 you know so like it really makes you think how like we were just told like, hey, you don't have to vote, but you should vote, but you don't have to vote. And everyone's like, don't vote. We can't vote. Let's do the right thing. And it really makes you wonder like why so many people were like, let's do the right thing. Because like in hindsight, I literally, I know that some of the questions I saw on Patreon, like what would you do different? Like, I'm like, I would fucking vote on every single time. <laughs> I would <laughs> oh, vote. Asper, I, I Dude, literally I, like, thought that I would have voted the first vote. Like, for like, sure. Because now I'm looking at it and I'm like, Dude, I was under the radar. Everybody got along with me. No one would have suspected it. And I could have just picked a person off every week. And that 250, you collect that by yourself. And no one suspected you as the one voting. But I do think, uh, I'm allowed to say this, yeah. Um, I do think that things, whenever we thought things were going to happen a certain way, the next day it happened different. And the producer, you know, I, I was thinking about this. The producer I, straight dead. I just, I could kind of get a sense for a show like this where they had a game plan, but they, I guess every day must have been different. They were like, okay, here are the possible outcomes. If, if the people in the house do this, we're going to do this. If they do this, mm -hmm. we're going to do this. And if they do this, we could do this or this, depending on who and who's left and what's going on. So I think at all times, you guys were fucking just mice running around we in a maze. So <laughs> at the very end, the producer... I would love to be on the production end. Of yes, this. like, like the production end it. is probably awesome. He said to us, one of the, oh, the creators or whatever, the producer, someone said... You guys are playing checkers in the game. We're playing chess on the outside of the game. So every move you're making where you're saying, hey, Joe, I think we should do X, Y, Z. Now they're in the booth going, cool. Guess we're Joe going to do X, Y, Z. Let's counter it by throwing this wrench into it. You know, and so now if we do X, Y, Z, they already have a plan for X, Y, Z. Now, what would throw them off is if we said we're going to do X, Y, Z, they plan for it. And then at the last minute, we're like, let's go option c which did that was, ever happen absolutely oh cool cool very cool now so, did you sorry were you no, no, that's good. That? uh let's see where we're at on time we're doing good okay um and i was curious about this too deanna mathis says um and this is a three-part question so keep up with me here did okay. julie ever end up confessing to the deal on adventure day did winnie ever end up confessing to tolu that tolu that she took thirty thousand, not eight thousand? and sorry one more when Lindsay went off on people how much of that was actually a factor of alcohol Okay, so read me the the first also, one. I can tell when people are drunk. By the way, when Jake and when Jake and uh, Julie Ooh, were in the pool, and then they started talking, and they're like, "Ah, oh, uh, I'm like, okay, yeah. okay, okay." I'll break this down. We'll we'll do this in sections. Did Julie ever end up confessing to taking the deal on Adventure Day? You're gonna have to watch and see. Okay, did Winnie ever confess to Tolu that she took thirty, not eight? I don't. So that that would be like, because that would have been or when he got voted off, and we and then it she's gone. So so it would have happened Zuri already. Did, yeah. Do um, we know anything? So I I think that she had told her behind closed doors, but it didn't air, and oh, then she just said that she only took eight, and then she told us at the table that she took forty. <laughs> 
<laughs> when Lindsay went off on people, how much of that was actually a factor of alcohol? I don't, I don't think Lindsay drinks. Really? Yeah, I don't well, think she she's drinks. Mormon. Yeah, she might not. Yeah, I don't. I don't I'm, if she did, maybe a glass of wine here or there, but she was never really drunk. She was just angry. I got a hot take and I'm going to say it before I get one more question for you, too. I was so proud of you when I was what this is when uh, you guys as I'm watching the show I literally call Gasper and I'm like yeah, <laughs> hey I don't care what you're doing I'm going to be texting you in real time um but when I was watching this specific part this part I was like you would have been my fucking boy on this show regardless if I knew you or not it's when I hated when Tolu came to sit with you guys knowing that everyone was mostly going against her and she's like fuck it we all gotta make friendship we you know i gotta hang out with people and Lindsay fucking looked at her and said oh nothing personal can you can you give us a minute can you give us some time and then what you said in the you said you know i don't i work with high school students like i don't have time for people to be mean like that it was just like there was it was there was no tact and no skill can you tell me about that when it actually happened Dude, it, it was, all right. So what you don't see is Tolu had made up with all the boys. Like we had made peace with her. I had gone up into the room and I said to her, like, listen, like, you know, I don't want your time. You're here. Like, don't just sit in your room and cry. Don't give up. Like, keep playing. And like, we got along great. I've told you before, like, she was my close friend in the house. It doesn't really show on TV, they gave her a really, uh, um, you know, a rough edit. But uh, when, like, when um, that whole thing with Lindsay, like that, that we were friends with Tolu, and then Tolu was like coming out to hang out with us because we were friends. She wasn't friends with Lindsay, but we were the three of us were friends with Tolu. And then when Lindsay did that, we were like, oof. Uh, and it's like, yeah, like we should have stood was up. That the moment that stood in your. And was that the moment where you flipped and you're like, Lindsay, not Tolu? No, the moment we flipped, once again, it's not aired, is that Tolu and I sat down at the table and we had this really deep conversation. And I'll tell you more about it on Patreon. All right. Oh! <laughs> well, I got to give something Patreon. on the Patreon. Dot but, com but, slash the social studies podcast. We'll finish this over there. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming out. <laughs> Patreon.com slash the social studies podcast. Yo, if you guys want to see me on the road, you can get your tickets at thejoedombrowski.com. And you can get yours for mine at gasparandazzo.com. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>